Drake Northwoods to the Rockbound Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at FoxBangor.com. More people choose Good Morning Maine. Hello, everyone. Today on Good Morning Maine, an outbreak of illness is causing more Maine schools to remain closed today. Plus controversy in Bucksport, where officials have decided to remove a nativity scene. And five local families go on a shopping spree thanks to Bangor police. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. Well, the powerful winter storm that has caused so many problems elsewhere is now at our doorstep. It's pushing its way into Maine this morning. And by later this afternoon, we'll all be seeing the first significant snowfall of the season. That's according to the Maine Emergency Management Agency. The potential ex exists for over a foot of snow in the foothills and mountains. The Bangor area is also expected to receive several inches, while coastal areas could also receive a messy mix with rain. The storm is also expected to bring strong wind gusts of up to 45 miles per hour on the coast and 30 miles per hour inland. All state offices will also close at 1 o'clock today. And Governor Mills strongly urges all people to drive cautiously while making their way home. Utility crews are also preparing for any outages. That includes Central Main Power, which has brought in extra line workers and tree crews to respond to any power outages that do occur today. So it uh, has already begun. I noticed some flakes uh, falling outside our studios here in Bangor. It's supposed to pick up later on today. And by the time it's all over, it's going to be a big, big mess. But we're used to it. This is Maine. It's winter. And I think around here, so they're talking about three to six inches. It depends on which way the storm goes. But one way or another, here we go. I love the look on your face. I'm just thinking about it, huh? my grocery list that I saved for today. <laughs> Good. Hopefully you have some groceries all ready to go. Yeah. I know Devin is standing by. He's been watching the storm closely. He joins us now with a first look at our forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Friday. We have winter storm warnings in effect until Sunday morning at around 1 a.m. Our next system is going to be moving in and giving us some problems with some decent snowfall on the way. You may notice, so there's some purple indicated here. Not right there is a small crack, or a winter weather advisory, excuse me. Or further off towards the north, there is a winter storm watch. The reason why I almost said a small crab advisory, because there is some uh, alerts along the coast, but not small crab advisory. We do have a gale warning in effect until Saturday at 4 p.m. And there's that winter weather advisory up until 7 a.m. As we head towards your Saturday for a few areas, and I'll mainly be up for some heavy wet snow in some areas. And Sunday at around midnight, so the expiration times will vary in a few spots. But otherwise, so we're quiet for now. All this right here is tracking from the southwest, going toward the north and east. Clouds are currently moving in, and our next system will arrive as we head towards the afternoon period. Here is a bigger picture. We're watching all of this right here, and it's moving in, and it's going to take its time. But again, later this afternoon, this will begin to move in with some decent accumulations that will take place as we head towards the weekend. Futurecast moving forward. Again, this pushes it in a little bit later. I know late afternoon, this will move in. And once it gets going, some heavy snow will be possible in a few areas, and maybe it's which order a little bit of a rain snow mix from time to time as you head along the coast with temperatures that'll be just a little bit warmer. As for the wind, it'll be out in the northeast from time to time, reaching up to around 20 miles per hour sustained, gusts up to 30, maybe 40 miles per hour, cannot be ruled out. And our only forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, cloudy skies, the snow begins later this afternoon. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. All right, thank you, Devin. Well, the deadly storm has been crossing the country all week and is now taking aim at the northeast with snow, ice, and rain. Meanwhile, in the deep south, we're getting new images from the area's hardest hit by a tornado outbreak. But we begin with a concern right now as the morning commute gets underway. ABC's Morgan Norwood has the latest. The holiday travel rush kicks off today with the massive storm impacting tens of millions of Americans. Heavy snow, rain, and ice coating highways across dozens of states. Tens of thousands of customers were without power overnight in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Maryland, and Virginia. And parts of New York and New England could see up to two feet of snow, the first significant snowfall of the season in many areas. Because people are not used to it, they think they can drive as fast as they usually can. They can't. So we have a lot of people that are off the road, so disabled vehicles. It comes as AAA predicts an additional 2 million drivers on the road this holiday season compared to last year. Oh my God. That same system produced a days-long tornado outbreak in the south, 56 twisters since Tuesday, killing at least three people. Multiple homes were damaged here in Clark County, Mississippi, and in Louisiana. A tornado lifted this home off its foundation. Everything's going on. In St. Petersburg, Florida, a twister slammed a tree into this daycare, 
inside half-eaten snacks on the table and those tree branches shooting down like spikes through the classroom's roof. The children had left the room only seconds before the tornado hit. Here's the incredible thing. The owner says the kids were eating snacks in this room. They left to use the bathroom before coming back to that same room for nap time where the beds are or were already set up. And in those moments that they were gone, that's when the tree came crashing down. No one in the daycare was injured. With snow in the forecast, the main DOT is boosting its efforts to recruit more help. The department will be putting out more hiring ads on social media in the coming weeks to help fill plow truck driver openings this winter. DOT is offering increased pay, competitive benefits, and on-the-job training for new hires. They say they are ready for the upcoming snow, but with more than 8,000 miles of roads to clear, they will take all the help they can get. That's a lot of roads to clear. More on the storm coming up in your full forecast. Well, meanwhile, a man is in custody this morning, accused of pointing a gun at a person during a fight. According to Penobscot County Sheriff's Corporal Ryan Fitch, a man called 911 to report someone had pointed a gun at him during a physical altercation. Deputies responded to the scene where Corporal Fitch says those present did not cooperate with authorities. A Maine State Police K-9 team was called in to search for the gun, but it was not found. The sheriff's office says ultimately 58-year-old Jeffrey Lewis, who is from the Glenburn area, was arrested on assault and drug possession charges. No one was seriously injured during that incident. A Brownville woman has been arrested for drug trafficking. Deputies from the Piscataquis County Sheriff's Office executed a search warrant at a residence in Brownville yesterday. They found methamphetamine, fentanyl, along with a firearm and stolen property, as well as $2,200 in suspected drug proceeds. 35-year-old Kristen Mathewson of Brownville has been arrested and charged with unlawful trafficking and scheduled drugs, possession of a firearm by a prohibited person, and theft. She is currently on probation for a previous drug trafficking conviction and is being held at the Piscataquis County Jail. The Ellsworth Police Department is trying to find the rightful owner of a large sum of money. Officials say it was found December 11th along the sidewalk near the local Circle K store. The police department hopes to hear from the person who lost it. You'll have to identify the amount of money and what it was in when it was discovered. School systems around the state of Maine are feeling the impact from an outbreak of illness. Just in the past week, schools in the Cumberland area switched to remote learning due to student and staff illnesses. Several schools on Mount Desert Island will also remain closed today, where they've been dealing with the outbreak of the flu, COVID-19, and RSV. That includes Bar Harbor Elementary School, where more than 20% of the students and staff were out sick this week. Bangor has been dealing with its own problems. Bangor High School nurse Heather Haskins says it's been really difficult with um, containing flu during the year. It's been pretty busy this year with the flu. Uh, there's been a lot of illness. There's been the common cold. There's been the flu. We've had some COVID. We've had some RSV. Uh, so we're getting hit with a lot this season. According to Haskins, the school department looks at absentees by illnesses when determining its next steps and says they are not near the current threshold of 15%, with only two th schools near the threshold. I guess that means they get to a certain threshold and they have to close. They're staying open for now. Well, the TSA agents at the Portland Jet Port caught someone trying to travel with some weapons. Officers detected this homemade firearm in a man's carry-on bag. They also found a hatchet in that bag. Portland police responded and confiscated the firearm. This is the third firearm detection at Portland Jet Port this year. U.S. Senator Susan Collins announced yesterday that the housing authorities in Ellsworth and Brewer will receive roughly $260,000 from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The money comes through the Resident Opportunity and Self-Sufficiency Service Coordinator Program. In a statement, the senator said, quote, The dedicated staff at housing authorities throughout Maine work hard to link seniors, individuals, and with disabilities and low-income individuals and families with access to an array of programs that help them improve their living conditions and achieve economic independence. The purpose of the program is to help residents of public housing make progress towards economic and housing self-sufficiency by removing the educational, professional, and health barriers they face. Well, the time is now 6.09. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, 
The removal of a nativity scene with a decades, decades long tradition has caused upset in Bucksport. But first, another check of our forecast. Looks like a messy day ahead, folks. We can expect snow throughout the day today. The highs up near 35 degrees may see some rain in some areas too. Tonight, the wind and snow will continue right into tomorrow. The highs tomorrow around 35. Oh, it's looking a lot like Christmas around here. Well, we are both looking a lot like Christmas. Yeah, I got all this at Rennie's, by the way. That's awesome. We got everything. We have everything for Christmas. We have lots of lights, we have bows, we have Christmas cards, we got bags, we got bells. For 72 years, Rennie's has been your main staple, and we love supporting main made and local products. So thank you for shopping Rennie's, and thank you for shopping local this Christmas season. Thank you for shopping Rennie's. Do you have leaky pipes? Are you planning a plumbing job? Is your heating system working right? Are you designing a plumbing project? Then contact Harley's Plumbing and Heating Plus. If your toilet will not flush, Harley will be there in a rush. Furnace bit the dust today. Harley crew is on the way. Harley Plumbing. Harley Heating. 990-2200. Call now. Harley! Call or visit online. Hello, Eastern Maine. Watch You Bet Your Life weekdays at 10 a.m. here on ABC7. How do you figure that it's not your fault? It's not yours, then whose? Marilyn Million. Look, Miss. Don't call me Miss, it's Judge. Well, Miss Judge. Not Miss Judge, just Judge. The People's Court. I like your style, Judge. All this week at 4 on ABC7. Welcome back, everyone. Well, nearly a dozen people were rushed to the hospital after falling ill from a gas leak in their apartment. Officials in Lawrence, Massachusetts, say the top floor of that apartment complex had faulty furnaces, faulty stoves, missing carbon monoxide detectors, and no smoke alarms. The 11 residents of the top floor were all taken to the hospital to be analyzed, but they are expected to be okay. Some residents of Bucksport are upset about the town's decision to remove its nativity scene. Our Matthew Jaroncic has more on the story. It kind of expresses all the, uh, all the freedoms that we exist, you know, that we have to promote ourselves or promote our faith, and it's not in a pushy manner. That is one reaction a Bucksport resident had after learning that their beloved nativity scene that has been put in town for dozens of years during the holiday season was taken down. Of course, the nativity scene has a very personal significance to me, but also it's part of the heritage of Bucksport and of America. The decision was made by the town after the main chapter of the Freedom from Religious Foundation requested to put its Bill of Right banner around the same spot as the nativity scene. I worked the town's attorney to find out what, le what the town's legal obligations were in regard to this request and learned that um, if the town had up a display that was considered to be um, religious in nature, that it, it had to uh, allow for a secular type of display as well. If displayed, the banner would be celebrating the bill's adoption, showing America's founding fathers and the Statue of Liberty looking down at the Bill of Rights. And while many residents are upset about the current situation, Mr. Waddell tells us that there is a solution to this problem. They may decide to give it to a church, and they may, that church may, ask the Jed Prouty house behind us to put it on their private property. That would be a win-win situation. However, with this topic being discussed at Thursday's town council meeting, Lassard is proposing an idea that would work best for both parties. Keeps the manger, puts the manger back in its location on the fountain and designates another area on Main Street um, near the Veterans Memorial Park. It's a space for private holiday displays. Matthew Jaroncic. ABC7 and Fox 22. Well, it sounds like they might have a solution that will make everybody happy. We have certainly not heard the last of that story. I know. It may yeah. have to change a little bit, but it sounds like they can still keep it. 
Yeah. Well, the time now is 614. Coming up after the break, the Bangor Police Department held a shop with a cop event last night at Target. We'll check out the good cause they were supporting. Plus, the Milo Food Pantry is giving away special gifts to those who visit the pantry through the month of December. Details on these stories and more when we return. You would have never thought Chippendales would be surrounded with murder. The contrast between the fun and behind the scenes. Let me tell you the part you don't know. It's explosive. 2020, tonight at 9, 8 central on ABC. Angie's list is losing the list. From now on, it's just Andy. Oh, I get it. You're all Gen Z now. Mm, not exactly. Hi. It's because now you can compare upfront prices and book a service instantly. Sounds easy. Super easy. Start your home project at Angie.com. Don't cry, don't whine. Get yours where I got mine. At BB's Tattoo Company, 262 Moosehead Trail, Newport. Napa knows great holiday savings. And with 29 locations in Maine, Coastal Auto Parts has the perfect gift for everyone this year. Lightweight, durable, and designed for comfort. Milwaukee's heat-on-demand jackets and hoodies are the perfect cold-weather gear. And stay warm even longer with a free battery when you purchase any M12 heated gear. Find the perfect gift this holiday season for you or anyone on your list. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a main family that cares. Bangor police officers helped spread some holiday cheer last night, offering the chance to shop with a cop at Target. The annual event pairs officers with five deserving families as they go on a shopping spree. Sergeant Jason McCambly says the officers look forward to the event every year. It's a little bit of public relations to see that we're people. Uh, we can be nice. We're not here to take away your freedom or give you a ticket or something like that. And, yeah, help shop. Brings yeah. out the kid in you. Now, shop with the Cop is made possible thanks to a generous donation by the owner of CNL Aviation Group, Chris Kilgower, who says it feels good to be able to give back to the community. It's just it's great to see the kids being excited and happy and maybe they wouldn't be able to get presents if it wasn't for us. So it's, it's great to be able to do that. Now the gifts were brought back to the Bangor Police Department to be expertly wrapped and then delivered back to the families. Dyer's Hope House Food Pantry is offering a special gift to those who visit throughout the month of November, or excuse me, December. The Food Pantry is giving away homemade stockings with small gifts inside. Two local quilting groups donated their time and materials to create the stockings. Trelba Rollins quilted some pot holders to fill the stockings with. Worcestershire's Wild Blueberries chipped in two, donating 100 small bottles of their wild blueberry honey. Our board of directors decided that uh, would make this a little bit small but special effort uh, for the clients this year. Uh, we put out the feelers around town and around the region, and people stood up and uh, they made actually made the stockings. The Dyer's Hope House Food Pantry is open Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's nice to see everybody pitching in and helping out their less yeah. fortunate neighbors. Yeah, those stockings are wicked pretty too. Yeah. Well, the time is now 6:18. Time to get a full look at our forecast. It's a messy one, too. Here's Devin. All righty, thank you very much. We do have winter storm warnings in effect until 1 a.m. as we head towards Sunday. A winter storm watch up until 4 p.m. Sunday for areas further to the north. That purple shade right there is a winter weather advisory that is up. And the expiration times will vary. Some places will expire Saturday morning at around 7 a.m. While areas further down toward the south and west will expire at around midnight as we head towards Sunday morning as well. And, of course, gale warnings also in effect until Saturday evening. So we won't be watching this for a while yet with snow that will begin to move in. Later on this afternoon, the evening time frame and a rain snow mixture that will be possible along the coast. Hence why that cutoff there with the alerts. But here's the system right here. With It's really getting its act together really good. It's going to be tracking off towards the north and east as the day progresses on. Hitting later this afternoon about 3, 4 o'clock or so. Maybe even a little later than that. And then, of course, later overnight, a lot of snow on the way. If you have any overnight activities, I'd probably cancel those and just stay home. Because the snow will get heavy from time to time and accumulate pretty decently. So the future cast currently 
moving forward, though, increasing clouds. Pretty much a cloudy sky all day long. Later this afternoon, the evening time frame, the snow gets going. And it'll be heavy at times, too, becoming a mess with travel, with gusty winds blowing that snow around. Now, of course, notice that cutoff. A rain-snow mixture cannot be ruled out for areas along the coast. And then on land as well, Saturday, we might see that rain-snow line moving a little farther to the north with temperatures that will get above freezing, but most areas should stay as snow overall. And we'll still see some snow hanging around as we head towards early Sunday morning. A lot of snow fall away. We're going to run this all the way through the entire snow events, so basically now all the way through Sunday and early Monday morning. Some areas can see up close to 10 inches in a few areas, maybe close to 6 to 10 inches, ranging from Augusta to Bangor. Lesser amounts to the south, and some areas getting close to a foot, like over Millinocket and the Greenfield area. So plenty of areas to watch with this heavy snow that looks to move in soon. But gusty winds we're also watching out for, reaching out around 25 miles per hour at times. And along the coast, look at this, 40, 45 mile per hour winds cannot be ruled out in a few spots as we head towards Saturday morning. And we'll keep that wind going again as we head towards later into that morning period for you Saturday. Wave heights are up as a result of all this. 9 to 12 feet according to some of the buoys closer toward land. 14 feet according to another buoy. So this is why we do have gale warnings in effect along the coast. We're average high is 34 degrees and we're going to be very stable, reaching for the lower to middle 30s for the next several days, which is actually very close to average. So overall, very quiet weather pattern in the temperature department moving forward. But of course, we do have that active storm moving in later on today. Middle 30s today, afternoon snow showers so that northeast wind getting up about 25 miles per hour. As for tonight, lower 30s snow likely. Some blowing snow will be expected and maybe to stay home tonight and be careful if you do have to be out. The northeast wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. Moving ahead towards tomorrow, mid-30s, rain and snow likely. Northeast wind gusting up to around 25 miles per hour. And many areas could see wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour further down toward the south. Here's a look at your extended forecast. The rain and snow chances pretty much continue all the way through parts of the day on Monday with temperatures that will be in the middle 30s overall. We finally start to dry out on Tuesday. We'll be partly cloudy with highs in the mid-30s. Salida's Rug Cleaners in Bangor is the best and only spot you should go to for your rug cleanings. Serving Maine for more than 70 years, we care about your rugs. Clean rugs last longer, and our family takes pride in being the professionals that you can trust. Our cleaning process consists of soaking your rug in a bath, shampooing, rinsing, and drying in a humidity-controlled dry room, making sure no detail is overlooked. Need a repair? We fully service every type of rug for you. Salida's Rug Cleaners. We care about your rugs. Van Sickle Kia is Northern Maine's first choice for pre-owned vehicles. We have a great selection of quality pre-owned vehicles with payments and prices for every budget. Shop your favorite brands like Kia, Ford, Jeep, Toyota, Honda, Subaru, Volvo, and more, all serviced, state inspected, starting at just $99.99 with payments just $2.39 a month, only at Van Sickle Kia. The best cars, the best prices, and the best warranty. I'm Peter Van Sickle. I guarantee you. Living in Maine means long cold winters and hot humid summers. Whatever the weather, Bangor Heat Pumps is your solution. Open 24-7, Bangor Heat Pumps takes care of you at home or at work. We operate statewide and service all brands and models. Understanding moving can be stressful, we will help move any units you may have. We offer a veterans discount in our home with a capeless hero discount. Visit us online at bangorheatpumpsllc.com or call or text us at 307-7746. Bangor Heat Pumps. Did you know that it's possible to buy the wrong type of flooring for your home? Whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or a professional contractor, the experts at Don DeCal Mainwood Floors are here to help, offering solid pro advice from choosing the right material and color to installation. Don DeCal features the highest quality hardwood flooring sourced from lumber right here in Maine, from Maine traditions. Not only will you get a floor you'll love, you'll get a floor that will last. Don DeCal Mainwood Floors, buy from the best, forget the rest. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Nearly 18 months after its formation, the January 6th House Select Committee is wrapping up the bulk of its work. It's releasing its final report, replacing former President Trump at the center of the conspiracy to overturn the 2020 election results. Fox's Madeline Rivera reports from Washington. In his farewell speech to Congress, Republican Adam Kinzinger spared no words against his party. GOP members have disavowed Kinzinger and fellow outgoing Republican Liz Cheney for serving on the January 6th committee. The once great party of Lincoln, Roosevelt and Reagan has turned its back on the ideals of liberty and self-governance 
Instead, it has embraced lies and deceit. The committee is getting ready to release its final report next week. After more than 1,000 interviews and through the course of 10 public hearings, the panel laid out what it calls a multi-pronged campaign by former President Trump and his allies to secure him a second term. I think that they uh, conducted the business with the seriousness it deserves. Uh, the fact that it's about our national security, it's about our democracy. Although the committee hasn't finalized criminal referrals and other recommendations, Kinzinger has made it clear he believes Trump committed a crime. We've made that clear. He knew what was happening prior to January 6th. Uh, he pressured the Justice Department officials to say, hey, just say the election was stolen and leave the rest to me. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy is vowing to probe the work of the committee once Republicans take back the House next month. And we'd want to get to the bottom. We'd want to not to play politics like the Democrats pick and choose. Chairman Benny Thompson also hasn't ruled out the possibility of releasing new evidence when the committee holds its last public meeting on Monday. In Washington, Malo Rivera, Fox News. Meanwhile, Twitter suspends the accounts of several high-profile journalists who cover the social media platform and its new owner, Elon Musk. The journalists work for top news organizations, including CNN, The New York Times, and The Washington Post. Musk accused the reporters of posting private information about his location that he says endangered his family. The suspensions come after a Twitter account that tracked Musk's private jet was permanently banned. The reporters say they were merely reporting on the incident and on Twitter's new policy that prevents the sharing of users' current whereabouts without approval. The Committee to Protect Journalists has raised concerns about those suspensions. We're learning more about the fate of an American citizen freed in a prisoner exchange with Russia on Wednesday. Fox's Nate Foy has more from Kyiv, Ukraine. <laughs> As the war in Ukraine grinds on, another American has been freed from Russian captivity. Suwady Murakazi, a U.S. Air Force veteran, was detained by Russian forces in June. He was allegedly tortured when the Russians found old pictures of him in his military uniform. It's still not clear if he was fighting alongside the Ukrainians or just an American in the wrong place at the wrong time. Despite Russia's propaganda uh, to portray themselves as victims... Uh, it's important to remember that Russia is the aggressor here. The prisoner swap comes as Russia is ramping up its air attacks on Ukraine's energy infrastructure, causing massive blackouts throughout the country as the fighting intensifies on the front lines. The commander of the Georgian Legion, considered one of the best fighting units in Ukraine, tells us this is a deliberate tactic by Moscow. It's a revenge because we are winning uh, them uh, at the front lines. But more help could be coming soon. The U.S. reportedly preparing to send the powerful Patriot missile defense system to Ukraine, a move backed by most lawmakers on Capitol Hill. I think it's important that you create a, a virtual Iron Dome. So a Patriot system is welcome. And most effective right now is being able to attack the... Uh the missiles that are coming in, cruise missiles and other missiles. Russia issuing a warning to the United States on Thursday, saying if the U.S. sends the Patriot missile defense system to Ukraine, it will be seen as a, quote, provocation. Reporting in Kiev, Ukraine, I'm Nate Foy, Fox News. Still to come here on the second half of our show, we'll get a glimpse of the world's largest menorah. Plus, we'll take a look at your community calendar for the weekend. We'll be back right after this. Wings for Children and Families is hiring youth and child case managers across Central and Northern Maine for all six of our locations. Wings offers a highly supportive work environment where caring and compassionate individuals can make a difference in the lives of children with special needs. Call today, visit our website, or connect with us on Facebook to learn how you can make a referral for services or join our team, where we are highly committed to bringing hope to those we serve. Wings, ranked one of the best places to work in Maine for the last five years in a row.
Nana's attic started many years ago for me. When I was a young fellow, I used to go with my grandmother collecting antiques and selling antiques. I went on many trips with Nana as I was fascinated with the world of antiques and the history behind old things. They remind you of days that have gone by, but spark memories of youth and hanging out with loved ones that are no longer with us. Now I've made that dream a reality first with my Ellsworth flea market and now my own store, Nana's Attic and then some, located in the old Olympia Sports in Ellsworth where you'll find treasures and antiques galore. Merry Christmas to all our friends and customers from McCusick Petroleum, 32 Summer Street, Dover Foxcroft. Get your hearing aids at Dover Audiology, Dover Foxcroft. Better hearing brings us closer to the joys of the holidays. Unwind 151 Water Street, Skowhegan. Main made wine, beer, and cocktails. Buy $100 in gift cards and get a free t-shirt. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Well, today is Friday, December 16th, 2022. It's also National Chocolate Covered Anything Day. A day when we celebrate things that are dipped in chocolate. I, I like that. Anything? Well, that's what it said. It said even some vegetables are better dipped in chocolate. I don't know about that, but I've had bacon dipped in chocolate, and that's pretty good. Most things vegetables? with chocolate. Vegetables? Yeah, I don't know. I'm tired, I, I Greg. There, there was horses. like a whole thing there. I wasn't even getting into that. I left it out. But I, My mind yeah. just went to shrimp. It's like, you really want to test yeah, it? Yeah, you don't want to do that either. No, some I things are not... Good dipped in chocolate, probably. But in general, we like things dipped in chocolate. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. get a Toll House cookie right. dipped in chocolate. Yeah, half I mean, of it. Dude, Nirvana. Chocolate, chocolate covered ice cream cones. Yeah. Yep, chocolate dipped. Now we're talking. I see where they're going. So have still. some chocolate today. The suggestion of vegetables just makes me mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, on this day in history, in 1773, the Boston Tea Party took place as American colonists boarded a British ship and dumped more than 300 chests of tea into Boston Harbor to protest tea taxes. And now mm. you can go dump tea into the Boston Harbor on the replica ship. Right. It is very right. um, anticlimactic in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and in 1944, the Battle of the Bulge began in World War II as German forces launched a surprise attack against Allied forces, although the Allies were eventually able to turn the Germans back. A pivotal battle in that war. Today's birthdays include veteran TV reporter Leslie Stahl, who is 81 years old, Singer Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top, one of my favorites, is 73. And it's also the birthday of Pope Francis, who is 85 years old. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Maybe Pope Francis is jamming out to some ZZ Top You today, never know. You, know? Yeah. you never know. He seems like he's kind of cool enough to... Rock and roll. You know, a little Lugrange The most rock something. and roll of the popes. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's rockish. Yeah. So, anyway, the anyway. weather is the big story of the day today. And I know. And we have the community calendar, but I'm not sure. Anything I right. say, take with a grain of salt. We're not quite there yet. I think I jumped the gun. But um, Yeah, we could do our forecast, and we'll tell you about all the things that might be canceled. Might be canceled. Because of the right. storm. We do. Yeah, we'll get to that. But here's Devin Biggs. All righty. Thank you very much. Happy Friday. We have winter storm warnings in effect until Sunday morning at around 1 a.m. Our next system is going to be moving in and giving us some problems with some decent snowfall on the way. You may notice, so there's some purple indicated here. Not right there is a small crack, or a winter weather advisory, excuse me. A little further off towards the north, there is a winter storm watch. The reason why I almost said a small crab advisory, because there is some uh, alerts along the coast, but not small crab advisory. We do have a gale warning in effect until Saturday at 4 p.m. And there is that winter weather advisory up until 7 a.m. As we head towards your Saturday for a few areas, and I'll mainly be up for some heavy wet snow in some areas. And Sunday at around midnight, so the expiration times will vary in a few spots. But otherwise, though, we're quiet for now. All this right here is tracking from the southwest, going toward the north and east. Clouds are currently moving in, and our next system will arrive as we head towards the afternoon period. Here is the bigger picture. We're watching all of this right here, and it's moving in, and it's going to take its time. But again, later this afternoon, this will begin to move in with some decent accumulations that will take place as we head towards the weekend. Future cast moving forward. Again, this pushes it in a little bit later. I know late afternoon, this will move in. Once it gets going, some heavy snow will be possible in a few areas, and maybe it's which order a little bit of a rain snow mix from time to time as you head along the coast with temperatures that'll be just a little bit warmer. As for the wind, it'll be out of the northeast from time to time, reaching up to around 20 miles per hour sustained, gusts up to 30, maybe 40 miles per hour, cannot be ruled out. And our only forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, cloudy skies, the snow begins later this afternoon. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. All right, thanks, Devin. 
It's going to be a mess. Yeah. Well, folks in New York City are preparing for Hanukkah with the lighting of the world's largest menorah. Right in the northeast, the menorah measures 36 feet high and is located on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. This year is the year of Hakel, Hakel, excuse me, which happens once every seven years, and it makes a special focus on Torah practices and learnings as well as on unity. Rabbi Shmuel Butman says, explains why this structure is so important. The menorah stands as a symbol of freedom, of inspiration for all people, regardless of race and religion and color and creed, especially now, since unfortunately anti-Semitism is on the rise. It's a phenomenon that we never understood will happen in the United States of America in this day and age. Nevertheless, it's a reality that there's a rise in anti-Semitism. The menorah is the answer to that. A smart man. Hanukkah officially starts this Sunday, December 18th. Happy Hanukkah to yeah. all of our Jewish friends out there. I love it's that. It's kind of late too. this year. Yeah. yeah. So many neat traditions. And Absolutely. Everything. Well, and now let's take a look at the community calendar. I know, like I said, we did post this online, um, hyperlinks with um, all the original postings for the events. So make sure to check in with them to see if anything's canceled. Yeah, the storm could cause a few problems. Right. And you may just want to stay home anyways. <laughs> Okay, so starting to today, December 16th, the Yarn Arts Club at the Millinocket Memorial Library at 6.30 p.m. Bring a project and settle in for some crafting and conversations. Coffee and tea will be provided. Welcome winter celebration at Fields Pond Audubon Center today at 4 p.m. It's a family-oriented celebration of nature and winter, cre recreating the classic story of the night tree, kind of like a winter solstice um, celebration. Starting with a read-aloud of the story, then with creating wildlife-friendly friend ornaments to decorate your own night tree. Advanced re registration is recommended. Non-member families are $12. Member families are 10 Mexico, archaeology, archaeo astronomy between space and time at the Versant Power Astronomy Center at UMaine Orno tonight at 7 p.m. It's an immersive planetarium scenario illustrating the important role played by astronomical observation for the evolution of pre-Hispanic cultures in central Mexico. Tickets are $7 for adults. Riff Johnson's 12 gigs of Riffmas at Penny Lane Bar and Grill and Brewer tonight at 6 p.m. Come help support the 12 gigs of Riffmas and help some Maine families in need. Jazz Charlie Brown Christmas tonight at the Bangor Arts Exchange at 7 p.m. The music of a Charlie Brown Christmas presented and performed live by the Heather Pearson Jazz Trio. I love that album. Tickets are $21. A musical Christmas carol at the Grand in Ellsworth, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And it's, um, I think it's original music, but it's still the same Charles Dickens story. And tomorrow, Saturday, SDS Festival of Trees at the Searsport District High School, 9 a.m. through 5 p.m., $1 for one ticket, $3 for five tickets, five for ten, and winners will be announced on December 18th. Seed sowing workshop at Fields Pond from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Hands-on workshop introducing native seed propagation for growing your own wildflowers. Definitely check to see if that's still on. It's $40 for members, $50 for non-members. Uh, the Nutcracker at the Collins Center for the Arts in Bangor. There's a matinee show and a 7 p.m. show. Bangor Area Youth Choir, Bangor Symphony Orchestra, and Robinson Ballet put on the annual production. It's a big deal. I saw that as a kid. Christmas Carol Sing Along at the Glen Burn Evangelical Church, 5 p.m. Joined in to sing Christmas Carol favorites with the Herman Baptist Choir as well. And a Fleetwood Mac tribute at the Bangor Arts Exchange at 8 p.m. tomorrow. Multiple artists from all around the state pay tribute to Fleetwood Mac. It's general admission. And on Sunday, Winter Wonderland pop-up picnic at Robbins Hill in Solon, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Make sure to register in advance. It's a luxury pit picnic, four guests per table. Each experience is one hour long, and that one may likely be canceled if it's super snowy. So check in with them and register in advance if it's still going on. Frozen party at the Orno Trampoline Park at 12 p.m. through at noon through 2. Elsa, Anna, and Olaf are back at OTP. Bring the family to meet your favorite Frozen characters. Admission is $10 for one hour. This event always sells out, so make sure to buy in advance. Santa at Mad Cats um, at Mad Cat and Company and Brewer, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Santa's coming to Mad Cats. Kids karaoke from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. So kids and adults events this weekend. Lots going on. Just make right. sure that they're still going on because of the right. snow. I want to have me one of those luxury picnics. That sounds I know. good. You know? What a nice way to get together with a family or maybe that would be a good gift. I yeah. think they do it occasionally. So that's a good gift card to give to somebody. Lots going on. Right. Tyler will have our sports news right after this.
Who's on it with Jardians? Three, jump. We're the ones getting it done. We're managing type 2 diabetes <laughs> and heart risk. We're on it with Jardians. Join the growing number of people who are on it with the once daily pill, Jardians. Jardians not only lowers A1C, it goes beyond to reduce the risk of cardiovascular death for adults with type 2 diabetes and known heart disease. And Jardians may help you lose some weight. Jardians may cause serious side effects, including ketoacidosis that may be fatal, dehydration that can lead to sudden worsening of kidney function, and genital yeast or urinary tract infections. A rare life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. And don't take it if you're on dialysis. Taking Jardians with a sulfonuria or insulin may cause low blood sugar. A one steady pill that goes beyond lowering A1C? We're on it. We're on it. We're on it with Jardians. Ask your doctor about Jardians. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to snow blowers, everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hank's Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. Put a little more cash in your bank. Save money with half-off deals at foxbangor.com. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's start with some college hoops. Hudson women's basketball has been rolling to open the year. At 6-3, and three, they've strung together a few wins before their winter break and are gearing up for another push at a NAC title. Ryan Sudol has the story. Hudson women's basketball is on a three-game win streak as they head into holiday break. Um, I think it's just given us a lot of confidence in like what we can do. We knew coming into the season that there were a lot of returners. Last year, the Eagles made the NAC conference title game. They were led there by forward Bailey Donovan. She's taking the reins once again in her junior season. I think Bailey's a really well-rounded player. She can shoot inside, obviously get the boards, but she can also step outside even to the three range. It's the people around me. Like What I do can't happen without them, so having a good support system off the court and on the court is what makes me the player that I am. She's just a phenomenal player. Everybody's keying on her, and she just attracts so much attention that's really opening things up for the rest of the crew. And sophomore guard Hannah Richards has taken advantage, averaging 11 points a game during the streak. The Old Town grad was a bit shy to start, but that's no longer the case. For Hannah, she came in and she was quiet, and now her comfort level is much better. As Hannah's come out of her shell, she has been a really big part of this team. She can do it all. She's a great all-around player. With Hannah and all other pieces coming together, the Eagles are preparing for conference play. With a 6-3 and three record, head coach Kissy Walker is hopeful they will keep the momentum going. So our whole goal is to strengthen our schedule so that it does prepare us for conference play and we kind of keep pounding into the girls telling them that you're only going to get better by playing strong competition and and so hopefully by the time we get there their confidence level will be pretty good. Reporting for ABC 7 Fox 22, I'm Ryan Sudol. Thanks for that, Ryan. Looking forward to see what the Hawks can do when they pick up conference play. Let's go to the gridiron now. The Patriots won on Monday night over the Cardinals. So a quickish turnaround this week. They actually didn't even come back to Foxborough, holding their weekly practice and preparations at the University of Arizona. They're preparing for the 5-8 and eight Las Vegas Raiders, led by a familiar face, Josh McDaniels. He took over the reins as head coach of the Raiders this offseason, and he's got a lot of weapons on offense. They've had a shaky start, though, losing a couple of one possession games games they've held big leads in so yeah they're five and eight but it could very well be different and coach Belichick knows his defense is going to have their hands full this Sunday in Sin City but I think when you look at him you see you know two very very explosive players offensively and a, and a great quarterback um, and obviously a good offensive system really really well balanced team that's um, just you know a handful of plays away from being you know probably in double digit wins 
Uh, that should be an exciting one. Let's go to some high school sports now. Some action on the courts on Thursday night. We'll head to Herman for a matchup of two 2-0 two squats. The Hawks and the Coyotes are going at it. Both won their first two games handedly. How about an early rematch of the Class B North Championship? This one in Herman, and we will start in the first quarter. Hawks early. The pass from Brooke Gallup is going to go inside to Bella Bowden, and she's going to cash in on the open layup. But the Yotes were just dominant in this one. Michaela Emerson, she's going to cash the pull-up triple right there at the top of the key. She was going off all night. On the defensive end, Ali Cameron looking for two, but Sage Evans says not so fast. Great block by the junior. And then Evans with a nice save. Ball goes out to Emerson, and again, she cashes in from deep. Moving on to the second quarter now, it's Evans getting to the hole and getting the two. Old Town gets revenge. 63-27 to is the final. All right, now for some boys' action. We are going to go to Orono for their home opener, hosting Herman. And this one was all Red Riots to start. A 19-0 run capped off by freshman Brady Hughes, laying it in off of the nice feed from Pierce Walston. Herman would end the run, though, on their next possession. Another freshman, Brody Hurd, puts it in off the glass for the Hawks' first points of the game. Let's move on now to the second quarter. Will Francis picks off the pass like he did all football season. He takes flight, and he, he throws it down. Will we count that as a dunk? Either way, the young fella got up there. He is fired up. Riots up huge. End of the half, it's Hughes pulling up from three right in the defense's face. Nothing but nylon. 49-11 at the half. Orno wins 93-38. Let's go to the Bruins now. They were in action on Thursday, hosting the Kings from Los Angeles. Best record in the league for the Bees, looking to keep it going. They're up one to nothing in the second where we pick this up. Brad Marchand on the power play. He's going to rip this one top shelf. Bruins out to a two to nothing lead. They were up two to nothing entering the third. It's two to one now, and it's Adrian Kempe on the power play. That is going to tie things up past Linus Allmark. No score through overtime, so it comes to this. Seventh round of the shootout, Trevor Moore is going to beat Allmark. That's going to seal it for L.A. They win it 3-2. to two. And That's going to seal it for us. That's all the time we have for sports. Be right back after the break. Whether you're hurt by a box truck or by any commercial vehicle, you may have a big case worth big money if you've been hurt by any commercial truck. Call the twos. We win for you. Hurt by a commercial truck? Come out on top. Call the twos. I'm Jay Pearl from Carroll Harper & Associates, Maine's most experienced Medicare health plans agency. Every day we hear how complicated navigating the Medicare maze can be. Let us help. From enrolling in Medicare to finding the right Medicare health plan, we are your go-to agency. We represent Martins Point Generations Advantage and other Medicare health plans that meet our quality standards. There's no cost or obligation for our services, so call Carol Harper & Associates today. Living in Maine, many things stick with you throughout your life. If you're far from home or you're missing those things, then Box of Maine is for you. Shipping nationwide for corporate businesses or individuals, Box of Maine gives everyone their own personal taste of our great state. And a portion of every box we sell goes directly to local nonprofits. Have you visited the gift shop yet? Filled to the brim with everything you find in our boxes, you can pick what you need or even create your own box. Stop by for perfect Maine gifts today at Box of Maine. It's a blue Christmas for many consumers as Americans tighten the purse strings this holiday season. Fox Business Network's Jerry Willis has this story and more in tonight's Fox Means Business Report. Santa's sleigh might be a little lighter this year. Retail sales falling six-tenths of a percent in November from the previous month. That's a bigger drop than analysts were expecting. Consumers are cutting back ahead of the holidays, mainly because of higher prices and rising interest rates. And it looks like a lot of people will be cutting back on their New Year's celebrations because of the same reasons. WalletHub says more than 75% of Americans expect to spend less on New Year's plans than they did last year. Investors were cutting back Thursday, too. The Dow had its worst day since September. The S&P 500 and NASDAQ had their biggest percentage decline since early last month. 
Wall Street was concerned after the disappointing retail sales report, but they are really worried about a possible recession as the Fed continues to hike interest rates. And finally, on a positive note, the cost of borrowing money to buy a home continues to go down. Freddie Mac says the average 30-year fixed-rate mortgage just dropped for the fifth straight week. It now sits at 6.31 percent. That's business. I'm Jerry Willis. I just looked out at the parking lot on the way in here. All the news cars have like a light dusting of snow. The real stuff oh. isn't going to start until later on today. Right. It looks like it's just kind of moving into the state, the southern part of the state right now. Yep. But it will be a mess by the time it's all over. Right. So if you have any errands to do, it's good to get them done in the a.m. hours. Right. Here's meteorologist Evan Biggs with our full weather forecast. All right, thank you very much. We do have winter storm warnings in effect until 1 a.m. as we head towards Sunday. A winter storm watch up until 4 p.m. Sunday for areas further to the north. That purple shade right there is a winter weather advisory that is up. And the expiration times will vary. Some places will expire Saturday morning at around 7 a.m. While areas further down toward the south and west will expire at around midnight as we head towards Sunday morning as well. And, of course, gale warnings also in effect until Saturday evening. So we'll be watching this for a while yet with snow that will begin to move in. Later on this afternoon, the evening time frame and a rain snow mixture that'll be possible along the coast. Hence why that cutoff there with the alerts. But here's the system right here with it's really getting its act together really good. It's going to be tracking off towards the north and east as the day progresses on, hitting later this afternoon, about three, four o'clock or so, maybe even a little later than that. And then, of course, later overnight, a lot of snow on the way. If you have any overnight activities, I'd probably cancel those and just stay home because the snow will get heavy from time to time and accumulate pretty decently. So, Futurecast currently moving. Moving forward, though, increasing clouds, pretty much a cloudy sky all day long. Later this afternoon, the evening time frame, the snow gets going. And it'll be heavy at times, too, becoming a mess with travel, with gusty winds blowing that snow around. Now, of course, notice that cutoff. A rain-snow mixture cannot be ruled out for areas along the coast. And then on land as well, Saturday, we might see that rain-snow line moving a little further to the north with temperatures that will get above freezing, but most areas should stay as snow overall. And we'll still see some snow hanging around as we head towards early Sunday morning. A lot of snow falling away. We're going to run this all the way through the entire snow events, basically now all the way through Sunday and early Monday morning. Some areas can see up close to 10 inches in a few areas, maybe close to 6 to 10 inches, ranging from Augusta to Bangor. Lesser amounts to the south and some areas getting close to a foot, like over Millinocket and the Greenfield area. So plenty of areas to watch with this heavy snow that looks to move in soon. But gusty winds we're also watching out for, reaching around 25 miles per hour at times. And along the coast, look at this, 40, 45 mile per hour winds cannot be ruled out in a few spots as we head towards Saturday morning. And we'll keep that wind going again as we head towards later into that morning period for your Saturday. Wave heights are up as a result of all this. 9 to 12 feet, according to some of the buoys, closer toward land. 14 feet, according to another buoy. So this is why we do have gale warnings in effect along the coast. We're average high is 34 degrees, and we're going to be very stable, reaching for the lower to middle 30s for the next several days, which is actually very close to average. So overall, very quiet weather pattern in the temperature department moving forward. But of course, we do have that active storm moving in later on today. Middle 30s today afternoon snow shower, so that northeast wind getting up about 25 miles per hour. As for tonight, lower 30s snow likely. Some blowing snow will be expected, and maybe just stay home tonight and be careful if you do have to be out. The northeast wind getting up to about 30 miles per hour. Moving ahead towards tomorrow, mid-30s, rain and snow likely. Northeast wind gusting up to around 25 miles per hour. And many areas could see wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour further down toward the south. Here's a look at your extended forecast. The rain and snow chances pretty much continue all the way through parts of the day on Monday with temperatures that will be in the middle 30s overall. We finally start to dry out on Tuesday. We'll be partly cloudy with highs in the mid-30s. Maine's number one Kia dealer, Van Sickle Kia, has you covered for the seasons ahead with an affordable Kia for everyone. Front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, hybrids, and fully electric vehicles. Find your next vehicle here. You'll get more car for less money when you upgrade at Van Sickle Kia. Plus, you'll get Kia's market-leading 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. The best in the business. Get started at VanSickleKia.com. The best cars, the best prices, and the best warranty. I'm Peter Van Sickle. I guarantee it. Oh, that feels so good. What a sweetheart. I'm so lucky. These socks are so soft. And her feet don't smell? These would be perfect for hunting season. Moisture wicking, odor resistant, hypoallergenic, softer than cashmere and warmer than wool. Get your alpaca socks and more at the Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Hey babe, can I borrow these socks? 
We have lots of stuff for Christmas. When you're all done decorating, come back to Rennie's because we got plenty of gifts at the best prices for your whole family. Thank you for shopping locally. Rennie's, a main adventure. For 72 years, Rennie's has been your main staple, and we love supporting Maine made and local products. So thank you for shopping Rennie's, and thank you for shopping local this Christmas season. Thank you for shopping Rennie's. Kim's Car Care offers detailing inside, outside, and under the hood for $299. We want our customers to have a wow factor with 100% satisfaction. Walk-ins welcome, and we do offer gift certificates. It's NBA Christmas Day, beginning at noon on ESPN and ABC. Now let's head over to the Mr. Food Test Kitchen to see what Howard has cooking up for us. Every year we get lots of questions from folks who are looking for new ways to serve seafood throughout the holiday season or on Christmas Eve. It seems like more and more of you want to change things up a bit and to introduce a little variety into your menus. Well, the good news is today we're sharing a recipe that looks fancy, is crazy simple, and is so good you'll be tempted to lick the plate. We begin by whipping up a shortcut Newberg sauce that's made by combining a can of cream of shrimp soup with some cream, a bit of sherry, and a little seafood seasoning. While this simmers, we pat some scallops dry with a paper towel and season them with salt and pepper. Now these get seared in butter just for a few minutes on each side. You'll know they're done when the scallops easily release from the pan. After placing them on a platter, we add some breadcrumbs and chopped parsley into the same skillet just to let it brown. Come dinner time, drizzle the sauce over the scallops, sprinkle on the buttery breadcrumbs, and there you have it, a dish that's holiday special and is made start to finish in just minutes. To get the recipe for our seared scallops with Newberg sauce, check out our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen where today we found a fancy schmancy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm. I love scallops. There's so much yeah, you can do too. with them. Yeah. Any so you could make any sort of sauce, a sweet sauce, a savory yeah. sauce, all sorts of stuff goes well with them. Get in my belly. Right. Yeah, no, right. I love good scallops. Yeah. All right, moving on now. A new bird feeder is on the market that can help enthusiasts learn more about the birds in their area. The Bird Buddy is smart bird, a smart bird feeder that notifies the owner of a visitor, including recordings and information about the bird in real time. It is also expected to help scientists track the birds with the information the AI collects. More information can be found at mybirdbuddy.com. Pretty neat for cool. all the birders out there. Up close and personal with yeah. the birds. That's awesome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good Morning America is next on ABC7. We'll continue broadcasting on Fox 22. Have a good Friday. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on half off dining, and start saving now. If you need coffee, check. Tasty treats, check. Freshly made pizza, check. Or wine and spirits. Check. Stop by and fill up your tank and check us out. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Happy holidays from Disconnected Tattoo in Ellsworth. Gift certificates are available. Body art is the perfect gift that keeps giving all year round. Patriot Homes wishes everyone a happy holiday. Patriot Homes can tackle all of your building projects, mobile home to the garages, porches, and decks. Happy Holidays from Nana's Attic and then some. Now open in the Mill Mall, Ellsworth. We have antiques, treasures, collectibles, furniture, and more. Hi folks, this is Barry Gass of Gass Horse Supply and Western Wear, 